Well, hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Photoshop User TV. I am Pete Collins, one of the Photoshop guys here with Corey Barker, and we're here to help you get better at Photoshop. And the great thing is, is that we are excited to be here with you and another episode. Corey, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Not to forget that we are brought to you by Kelby One, who bring you... Dun, dun, dun. Photoshop user. Dun, dun, dun. That's right. So, welcome back everyone, I am Corey Barker. I have had the same shirt on for the past four episodes and I couldn't be more excited about it. <laughs> Pete, how are you? I'm just tickled to be here. It's been fun, isn't it? They let me out of my cage and uh, you know, this is yeah. my, my free time, this is recess. It is that rare occasion, so. Why don't we kick it off? Uh, Pete's got something he's gonna kick us off. He's had a continuing theme running these past few episodes and I think he's gonna be wrapping it up this time around. What do you think? Yeah, I've been, uh, basically what happened is I was looking for some different ideas for creating an, an iPad or an iPhone uh, looking uh, screen, background or whatever, and so I came across some neat ones and I started thinking about how I would create some of my own backgrounds and stuff for it. And so this fourth one is what I came across was this is a neat one here and it's a little dark up there, but hopefully you can see that it's kind of uh, got a blue print kind of background to it, and it's got this tech feel to it. It's very wire framey. Yeah, kind of wire framey. And so I started playing around, and a lot of times what I'll do is I'll jump over and I'll try to find something similar at like iStock Photo or at Photolia. But the truth of the matter is, this time I said, how can I make it something that I create from scratch? So the first thing I did is I went, hmm, let me go check the different stuff that I already have. Uh, because a lot of times you probably already have some good stuff to play with. And I've got all kinds of files. If you look over at Bridge, I've got just reams and reams of paper. You see what I did there? Reams, paper. I've got all these paper files that are not only great for just background textures of paper themselves, but they lend themselves to create all kinds of other textures. And so what I did is I came across um, some other images in there, and I really liked this base texture right here. So I pulled that up. And, and here's the thing, once again, I showed before, if I've got these two here, I can come in and I can just go arrange, and I can do a two up vertical where I can compare the two. And the nice thing is I don't really need a lot of that. I just want a little bit of it to kind of remind me what I'm working on. So now I've got a decent base image. I like the color and I like the texture. So uh, then I went out searching for some other stuff and I decided, well, I didn't have a good graph paper that I could use, but what I did have was this neat kind of grungy regular paper. So what I did is I took this and I'm just gonna take and bring this over. Let's get this back over here. Let's check. I know it's documents. fighting me now. Windows, arrange. Let's do something crazy. Three up vertical is just amazing and it's locked and I dislike you, but we're gonna bring it over like that. Uh -huh. Aha, I defeated it. Get rid of you, goodbye. I'm gonna get rid of you like this because normally once I get an idea, I just need the whole screen to play with. Okay, so I've got that paper in there, but it's a little too big. Now here's the thing. I notice you'll notice that different people do different this different ways. When you drop something in and it's too big, Corey tends to take and go control or command O, I believe, yep. to show the whole outside of it. I tend to like to keep everything right there because I tend to like the size I already have it. So what I do is I just simply come up to my options bar, hit that link button, and then I just drag one of my, my uh, sizes over and I start shrinking it down so I never have to change out of that screen and I can bring it to the size I want until I get the handles. And now, it, since it's constrained, I can go ahead and do something like that. However, here's the downside to it. Once I do that, I may want to kick that off so that I can constrain it in like that. But it's just another way to do it. Okay, I get that like I like it. And so I'm gonna go over and change the blend mode to multiply and it looks okay. But here's the, the trick. Because I wanna make it graph paper, I'm just gonna do another situation of that, Commander Control J to make a copy. Now Commander Control T and I'm just gonna spin it. Ah, but I gotta change my my size and again, and look, as soon as I start to do that, I can now create my own graph paper by simply taking the lines and letting them intersect with each other. Now here's the thing, I can now take each one of these and maybe instead of multiply, I could do screen, nope. How about soft light? 
Yep, I kind of like the way that works a little bit better. And so what I'm doing is I'm using what I already have to build a background, just using very simple techniques. And what I've done is I'm able to create a whole new set of backgrounds. If I don't like it, if I want to change the way it looks, I've got complete control here. And eventually what I can do is I can come in and create the kind of background that I like to look. And then I build my own background display from that. If you'll notice, I come in here. Here is the background that I've created using those two layers merged together right on top of there. And then I've simply built my, my app holders right there on top of it. And I'm ready to go. So don't think just because you don't have that absolutely perfect stock image that you're stuck or you have to go out and buy it or whatever. Go mm -hmm. check what you have. Go see if there's a way that you can take those and merge those together to give you a look that you want. The nice thing is once you create that look, nobody else will have it, and people go, ooh, how'd you do that? And say, ah, it was nothing. And that, of course, is it. There's a uniqueness to it. But also, it's not just the textures themselves, but I always, people tend to dismiss textures because it's the wrong color right. or something like that. And, just, and I, I have outrageous, weird, pink, you know, ugly textures. But the thing is, they're great textures. The color can be dealt with in Photoshop, of course. Yeah, I mean, you can blend that out and do whatever you want to with it. So awesome tip. That's awesome. I like it. Now yeah. you're ready to now next now next week you're gonna have it on your iPad to show you and yes. throw it in play? Yeah. I'm not that I'm not that organized. There's no way never. it's gonna happen. We never are. All right. We are gonna take a quick break. We're gonna come right back. I have finally got 3D. You've been waiting for it for at least two minutes. You got to wait a couple minutes more. All right. Stay with us, we'll come right back. We'll be right here. <laughs> Hi everybody, Scott Kelby here, and we are very excited to announce Creative Cloud Training Month here at Kelby One. Now, with over 1.5 million subscribers to the Adobe Creative Cloud, we wanted to get you some classes to get you up and running as fast as possible. That's right, and for the entire month of February, we're gonna be posting a new class every weekday. And we've got things on Illustrator, InDesign, and if you're into video, we've got you covered with After Effects, Prelude, and even Premiere Pro. One of the great things about the Creative Cloud is you now have access to some incredible apps such as Behance and Cooler, and we've got classes for you on that to round out your Adobe Creative Cloud experience. And if you're a photographer, you're gonna love our classes on Lightroom, Photoshop, and even Camera Raw. If you wanna learn about Bridge, Muse, or even Typekit, we've got you covered. And it all starts February 1st, so come join us for Creative Cloud Training Month at KelbyOne.com. All right, we're back from break, guys, and we are excited that this year Photoshop World is going to be in Atlanta, and it's creeping up fast. So make sure you lock in the special rates before March 1st and get all the information over at PhotoshopWorld.com. Make sure that you check it out, and we'd love to see you there in Atlanta. Speaking of great stuff, Corey, you've got a 3D tutorial I for us. I do, but just to add to that, Photoshop World, um, we, we are, of course, definitely super excited to go to Atlanta and have me see everybody out there. So if you've never been and have always been curious, go to PhotoshopWorld.com and check it out. It yeah. certainly is. We still, we've been, I don't know how many, and so we many still times. have a ball. It's our, it's our favorite part it's of our, the year. It is our Super Bowl, of course. Super Bowl. Oh. All right, all right, 3D. So this is something that you can just really kind of have fun with with 3D and Photoshop. And this is a, a simple stock image of just some different planks of wood. And notice they have varying shapes, but it's flat and two-dimensional. What if I wanted to create really thick you know, like boards out of this, like I wanted to create like a 3D letter? Well, it's a lot easier than you might think. Now, the first thing we need to do is I'm going to make a duplicate of the original background layer. Go in here in the toolbar, grab the magic wand tool, and select the background. I'm simply selecting, just click once on that white background. Then go to the select menu. I'm aware if I might go a tad fast, but there's a lot of steps in here. You can <laughs> rewind if you need. Select and go to modify and choose expand. I'm going to set the expansion by 10 pixels. I'll click OK. And you can see it chokes the selection in a little bit. Now, I'm going to do a content aware fill. Just go ahead and do uh, press shift delete, use contents, content aware, normal, 100%. There we go. So now it's basically going to fill the entire wood texture in the background. Now I'm going to do a select all, command A, and now copy this to the clipboard. And we will get back to that. That's going to sit in the clipboard for the moment. Now, back to the original layer. I'm going to reselect that background and again select inverse and then press command J. Now what that's done is I've simply copied those selected areas to a new layer. So now the boards are on a transparent background. 
Now just to make sure the edges are cleaned up, I'm gonna go to the layer menu and go to matting and choose the fringe. This will allow me to remove any anti-alias noise that was picked up by that white background when we copied it over. So I'm gonna set this to about three and that should clean it up nicely. Now, go to 3D. New 3D extrusion from selected layer. It's going to go ahead and extrude those elements in a way that's more than I would like it to be. <laughs> so uh, it, always, it always extrudes objects more than I ever want it to be. I always have to adjust that feature. I wish I could set some kind of default there, but anyway. I'm gonna go into the layer 3D panel and choose layer two, which is the, the name of this layer, and then go in the properties panel and just bring the extrusion depth down to about right here. So it gives a nice thick boards there. Now. That, there's a four by four. Four by four by four. So on the extrusion material, we see what we're looking at where the, we see the wood grain now is the front elevation, the front inflation of the text. Now we're looking at the sides and we see that they have a, a simple default gray fill. So I'm gonna select layer two extrusion, into the properties panel, choose diffuse, and go to new texture. Now it's going to remember that texture we copied to the clipboard a moment ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave those dimensions as they are and click okay. Now all it did was create the document. We still have to go back into that diffuse menu and choose edit texture, and then paste that original wood texture. Close the document, save the changes. Now the wood grain is along the sides. Now it doesn't look that, I'm perfect. I'm sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you. That's a really important point that'll trip people up because if you remember to do, do, do diffuse, but you forget to go back in there, you go, this doesn't work. Right. And that's usually where people will cut out. Yeah, it'd be great if it just created the document and then opened it, but you have to go create the document and then go back in and open it. Just remember that. Now, notice the wood texture is a little bit um, stretched on that surface. So I'm gonna fix that by again going back to that diffuse setting and this time choosing edit UV properties. Now it's gonna allow me to adjust the scale of the texture on that surface so I can actually make it a little bit more realistic. So to see that simple adjustment now makes it look like the wood grain blends nicely. Now to blend it even more so, I'm gonna reselect that layer two and um, let's get it so you can see the whole name here that layer two extrusion material, and then go down here to the bump setting, down here in the properties panel, and there is a little menu icon next to that. We're gonna go ahead and choose the same layer two extrusion material we just applied, and that's gonna allow for some real texture to be blended into that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show the front face again, and we'll do that layer two front inflation, and we'll do the same thing. I'm gonna go into that bump setting and choose layer two extrusion material, and it gives me that little bit of grain in the wood. And now we have nice, thick boards that have real volume to them. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and make another background layer and fill it with black just so we can see what's going on here. So we're not on a transparent background. But now, there's still one 3D object. So if I move this around, you can see it's all treating it as one. Well, if you select the object, go under the 3D panel and choose Split Extrusion, you can now modify each wood element separately. So I can reposition this Hi. and slide it over. Hi. Stack this on top of this. And this is where you can get into some digital carpentry and build. So actually, I'm, I'm just using the widget here to squash the size. See, I can just make it a long board or a short board and then just slide it over here. It's like a little Swiss Army knife for your 3D. It does a whole bunch of cool things just using this widget. Notice how I'm highlighting over an object and then we'll just rotate this one. And hey, look, it's a P for Photoshop 3D. So I'll position that there and then I can, then I can go in here and add elements like, you know, brackets or something to kind of connect them all together. But there you have a 3D letter built from giant wood blocks made from a flat two-dimensional stock image. So just gives you a really good idea of what you can do um, not just with 3D, but with 3D objects and you know, building your own elements and not just starting with a basic shape and everything like that. So there's my 3D trick. I don't, I don't know about the rest of them, but you made me bored. <laughs> bored. <laughs> with that. I got a million. All right. Before he throws any more <laughs> bad ones in, let's hurry up and wrap up the show. So I think we have another Peach video, uh, E-Deal this week. What do you think? What does it say on there? Yeah, we do. Tyler Jones has the 100% Kid. That's the name of the book. It's not 100% Kid book. It's 100% kid, all about kids. Make sure you check it out at peachpit.com slash Kelby1 and put in the, the discount code of Kelby1 to get your special price on that book. Also, lastly, we're gonna give away 
No, we've we got, don't, we, we, actually, no, we do have a we, cool book here. We have a book to end all books for you. It's the Windows Vista The Windows book. Vista No, book. actually, that's just crap. <laughs> all right, so. <laughs> that was really Matt's gonna book. Give, what we're really going to give away, Matt wouldn't care either. All right. We're really going to give away is my new Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers Volume 2. It's going to be out soon. Uh, if you go to kelby1.com slash contest, as you see right here, and go and enter under Photoshop User TV, leave your name, email, and you will be in the running to win the book before it is even released. So the moment it's shipping, it'll ship directly to you if you are the fortunate winner. I have seen the book, and it is phenomenal. I'm very excited about it. It came out really good. Gutenberg. So. Corey Barker. Well, I wouldn't. Please. They're close. They're close. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Except goodbye. I hope you guys enjoy this week's episode. We'll see you next time on Photoshop User TV. Bye-bye. Take care.